In this video, I'm going to be answering a question that we get all the time, which is what is the right way to upgrade to Zoho One? So in this video, it's going to be targeted at people who might have a couple Zoho apps already set up. If you're going to be starting with Zoho One from scratch, this will still be a helpful video. You can follow these steps. A few of them might just not be relevant, particularly the ones around selecting particular apps and making sure that they get associated when you move on over. So before we jump in, I do wanna ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below. Leave us a comment if you've got any video requests, questions, or feedback for us. And as always, if you need some help on your Zoho install, just head on over to zanata.com click on book a meeting and we'll be talking about how we can help in no time. Without any further ado, this is our CRM demo account here. Um, I've spun up a, an instance of Zoho that basically has CRM and Zoho sign. So maybe you're using this right now for a sales team. They're working their lead to deal flow. They're sending out a contract and then you're doing maybe your fulfillment and accounting outside of Zoho. Maybe you've done some exploration of projects and books and Zoho Flow and Zoho Forms and you want to bring a lot of that stuff in. This video is going to help you get that set up. So a couple important notes before you actually get started on the Zoho One migration. I always recommend just coming into each of the applications. And if you have a lot of them, you got to go through each one. Just make sure that every application is owned by that same user. So in my case here, my super admin is my Zoho One migration user. I only have one user in my account, so easy. I knew it was going to be right. Um, but just make sure that every single one of these apps has that same owner um, because it will make life much, much easier as you go to actually do the migration. So again, in my case, I know that CRM and Zoho Sign are both owned by the same user account, so I'm ready to proceed. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to head on over to one.zoho.com while we're logged in as this user. Again, very important. We'll make your life much easier if you do it this way. We're going to give this a company name. So we'll say Zoho One Migration Example. The portal name here is just going to be what it's going to add in the URL. So make sure that you like this. If you wanted a different name, you can enter that here. We'll give in a phone number and then an industry. The industry value here, just pick the one that's closest to you. They use it to recommend you a couple apps that might be relevant, but don't worry too much about it. Now I can go ahead and create my account. Oh, doesn't want the word Zoho in there. That's funny. I don't blame them. So we'll say Z1 migration example. Fair play, Zoho. So now essentially this account is being created in the background here. Doesn't really take long. Again, if you're looking at the timeline bar below. This is not a super long video. Um, when everything goes smoothly here, this doesn't take much time at all. Um, so here, now it's actually set up our Zoho One account in the background. The next step that we want to make sure that we do is making sure that any of the applications that we already have, so in our case, CRM and Zoho Sign, get properly associated with my new Zoho One instance. So in my case here, what this page is showing, essentially, hey, here are the applications that we think you already have. Now, in this case, work, drive, and meeting kind of come bundled with things. So it, it kind of creates those in the background. You'll almost always see those get created if you have a set of Zoho apps. Really, my recommendation is everything that shows up on this page, just go ahead and add it unless you have a reason not to. Occasionally, you might have some old, gross Zoho campaigns account and you're like, eh, you know what? I want to make a new one. I'm going to throw that one out. We're not going to worry about that one anymore. Uh, there are some cases where you might skip adding one of these applications to Zoho One, but as a general rule of thumb, you want to select basically all of these when you move over. We'll click continue. This next page is really just asking you a little bit about some of the use cases that you have for Zoho One. This is nothing binding. This is nothing contractual. This is really just that if you were to select one of these, it's going to suggest to you certain applications that might be useful for you. So if I were to suggest project management, unsurprisingly, it's going to say, hey, try out Zoho projects, right? If I do ops and finance, Zoho books and inventory. I'm going to skip this for now, but I honestly kind of like this. I think it's a good habit to just select one of these um, for that primary reason that you're moving over. Um, so now it's just going to run and associate those applications in the background. So we'll be right back in just a moment for the next steps. All right. That was really quick. That was one of our quicker uh, jump cuts. So I'm going to go through this tour real quick just to kind of orient you to where everything is in the Zoho One interface. 
So up in the top left, we've got our home dashboard. This is where we've got some videos on this. Freddie will link them, maybe do a, a you know a little placard card here um, where you can create a dashboard that pulls in data from all of your different Soho apps. Over here on the left are all of your pinned applications. These are essentially your favorites, right? So the ones that I'm gonna go to day in and day out that I want that quick access to. Down below, we have other or recent apps. So these are other applications that are part of Zoho One that you have accessed recently. We also have the launcher. This is gonna show you all Zoho apps that you have access to. So if you're an admin, it's gonna be every single Zoho One app. If you're a user, it's only gonna be the ones that have been permissioned and delegated to you. Um, down on the left here, we've got our directory. That's just kind of the list of all the users and their access control. We've got Zia Search, which I recommend don't sleep on Zia Search. If you're on Zoho One, it's well worth playing with because it will actually search across all your Zoho apps. So if you were like, hey, I remember we had this thing going on with this one client and this device that they had. If you search for that, maybe it was a ticket, maybe it was in projects, maybe it was CRM. It's going to actually look through all of those and show you the answers. Up in the top right, we've got our little settings cog. We're going to go in there in just a moment. And then last but not least, we have our personal settings where I can control my password, my subscription management, all of those specific things. So one of the first things I like to do with a new Zoho account is I jump into my settings section. I go to applications. And what I really like to do, and you might think I'm a little crazy, but I'll explain why. I like to go in and add basically every single Zoho One application right away. I'm not going to make you watch me do that one by one by one by one. Uh, I'll show creating one or two of them. The reason that I like to make all of them right out of the gate is that once one of these is created and associated with your Zoho license, if one of your users who is in your Zoho One account tries to create an account for one of these later, it will stop them and it will say, hey, You've already got an account created. Reach out to your administrator. One of the things that can get a little wonky with Zoho One installations is that for some of these applications, a user can actually make their own independent trial account separate from Zoho One, um, which you then need to back out and get deleted and then add them into the appropriate one. Or you need to get in touch with support to like move that one into Zoho One if you want to keep it. Um, so I always just recommend kind of going one by one here. It takes a couple minutes, but I promise you it's worth doing. It will save you the time. And I just like to get all of these added um, and set up at least at a baseline level so that really just so that people can't make trial accounts of them quite so easily. Then once I have all of these created, we can jump into users and actually start assigning out those applications. So for each user, of course, we can give them any particular application with any set of permissions. So me being the admin level account here, of course, I'm going to be an admin for all of these apps, but you're actually able to assign them very specifically and granularly based on the permissions that should be given to a particular user. And so one little pro tip while we're in here, I do always recommend creating some groups. Groups are essentially a way to assign a user to a group, and then it will use conditional logic to assign them to all the appropriate applications. We do this internally. So if I hire a new consultant, I just put them in the consultants group and they get the appropriate permissions for CRM, Desk, Zoho Creator, um, really all of the applications that they're going to be using internal to Zoho. It's honestly one of my you know favorite things about Zoho One is when you onboard a new user, there's just so many less things you have to do. If you have 10 different software tools, you got to add them in all 10. If it's 10 apps inside of Zoho, you just add them in one place. And so with that, I mean, we, we've got other videos here on kind of customizing this homepage view and kind of interacting with Zoho through this Zoho One interface. I did want to make sure we stay razor focused in this video purely around that migration. Last thing I do like to check is just make sure that once you've added all of these, all your users are in. Sometimes if you had like a CRM account, with let's say like 50 users in it, when you move over to Zoho One, it's going to give you a trial for 10 users. So just make sure that shortly after doing your migration, you come into those personal settings and actually upgrade your account with the credit card and, and put in the payment. Um, if you're starting from scratch or if you don't have a lot of users, I do always recommend kind of taking the time to use that trial for free to do some configuration. But if you're already like a heavy CRM user, you're just going to have to drop in that credit card and actually get things moving. 
uh, just to make sure that none of your users lose access for any period of time. So with that, I think we're actually ready to wrap up here for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video is useful. Kind of recorded this one just based on some questions that we get from our clients and, and from the, the community on YouTube and over on Club Sonata. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I do hope that this video is useful for you. My name is Tyler Colt and I'll see you next time.